I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am a vampire. Born anew into an age of death and pestilence, while plotting factions close in around me, I am sworn to find the source of this epidemic. I am convinced greater perils are still to come. I know the answers I seek are hiding in our blood.
So be it. Rational thinking only. What will London have to say to me? No, it never got easy. Dr. Swansea, thank goodness. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane, for I bring good news. 
Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, find a... Good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King and Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent, and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vasily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, head pain, diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration, but he's having trouble keeping even water down. Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalp! Hand me that scalp! What can I do, Doctor? I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Don't question me, nurse. I need a drain. Now. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, Doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. I need the room. I'd prefer to stay and see this through. This is my patient, Doctor. I have needle and thread for stitching the wound. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! Cardiac massage, now. Cardiac... what? Are you making this up as you go along? We've lost the pulse. He... he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. 
Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I doubt you're here to test my bedside manners. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? No. Your place is here. Jailing you would be an even greater crime. So? Here is my proposition. I'll look the other way on your little enterprise. In exchange, you will resign from the Pembroke Hospital and provide me with medical supplies when the need arises. Dr. Reed! That sounds like a business proposition. My accomplice, then. No, just a privileged client. My research may require the occasional rare piece of equipment or ingredient. I'll pay good coin in exchange, fair and honest, to help finance your noble endeavors. We have ourselves a deal, Doctor. Good customers are always welcome. Yes, Nurse Crane. We have a deal. Right? Say I trust you. But you will still pay the ransom. That is only fair. After all, it was you who failed to bring this problem to a satisfactory conclusion. I believe I could agree to that. Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Good evening, nurse. How should I address you? 
Dorothy? Dorothea? Miss Crane? Dorothy is all right. If you don't mind me calling you Jonathan. That's fine with me. What can I do for you then, Jonathan? How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? I don't know whether you have undertaken your own patrols or examinations, but local health seems stable. How are things going in the dispensary? Things are going fine, since we made our arrangement. Have there been any more attacks by the uniformed men? No. It looks like they have found another business to extort. Do you have many patients? A few, but most of them just pass through and go back home, especially since those vigilantes stormed the building on the night you were here. I hope you've stopped jeopardizing this facility with your illegal business, Dorothy. Yes, I have. Most of the time. But the blackmail money is too useful to stop it completely. I just target less dangerous people. Why did you blackmail Lady Ashbury? She's a generous person. You could have asked her for money directly. She killed those patients, I'm sure of that. I know you like her, but that ginger head has a taste for blood. Who is the current victim? I would rather you did not know. You are my client, not my accomplice. Besides, I'm much more cautious since the first time you found me. Do you need medical help, Dorothy? I'm a professional nurse. Rest assured, I'll ask for your help if I need it. Are you not afraid of dying? The epidemic is deadly and very contagious. I'm more afraid of being locked in a cell. I've seen what most hospitals do to the sick staff. They keep them hidden to avoid panic. Do you trust me? You forced me to resign after you caught me trying to save a dying patient. Of course I trust you. You're a blackmailer, just like me. Tell me about yourself, Dorothy. There is not much to say. My real name is Dorothea Krasunescu. I was born in Romania, and I may have been the best nurse Pembroke ever had, before you fired me. Do you regret your time at Pembroke? I miss the energy. There was so much to do, so much to learn. Even though I was double-crossing the board, I felt I was part of something worthwhile there. Do you think about going back to Romania? Once the war is over and the epidemic here has been contained. Jonathan, this war will be over long before you will see any improvement in Whitechapel's sanitary situation. Show me what you have in stock, please.
it, boys! Ah. Want some of this? Die, Ferdy! Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? 
You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. There was nothing left in the warehouse. The new owners must have helped themselves to the supply. Fair enough. I guess it was a long shot. I just hope those drunk bastards didn't give you a hard time. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. noise. A vampire kills in utter silence. It's locked, all right. to these parts. Informing London's inhabitants of the presence of vampires. What does that make me? A double or a triple agent? Easy does it! Ah! 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 Prima 
none shall prevail. I shall be <laughs> <left. laughs> Done. Mr. Throgmorton should be happy. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? I put up your public service announcement. <laughs> Consider the common folk warned about the vampiric presence. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You may not realize it, but you saved a great many lives today. Do you really think they could be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. Tell me, Ichabod, why do you consider yourself the protector of Sean Hampton Shelter? He is a truly inspiring example. Dedicated, pious, his shelter is open to all, whoever they are. Most admirable. So... I patrol late at night. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. They also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. W what kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton.
What have you done? Vicar Larrabee? What happened? Demon! Hell Scourge! Son of Perdition! Vicar! <laughs> Vicar! Jonathan's no demon. He's just a soul. Returned from the dead. Like your Christ, Vicar. Mary? Is it really you? Oh, it's me, all right. Precious brother. What is Mother doing here? I'm gathering the family for a final reunion. All smiling, all dead. Thanks to the good Dr. Reed. Mary. Mother? Say hello to your son. Hello, Jonathan. Mother, I... What do we have here, Mother? The prodigal son has lost his tongue. Our Jonathan always had the first and last word at dinner. The entertainer, the star of our show. I'm sorry. Let me explain. Shut up. It's my turn to do the talking. I have this nasty hole in my chest, Johnny. It needs to breathe. Of course. You can speak. My prayers went so long without an answer. My husband killed in France. My child carried away by the flu. My brother promising to return in his letters, then disappearing in thin air. I went from hospital to hospital, cemetery to cemetery, grave to grave. I've lifted every stone in London, searching for an end to the nightmare. And there you were, in front of me. On a dark pier. The hunger had taken me. The joy to have finally found you. I longed for your arms, a final happy ending to so much tragedy, to tell me all would be well again, as you did when we were children. <laughs> it was this filthy dock where you greeted your sister. I dug a tunnel from my grave with my fingers and teeth. Mary, I thought I had murdered you. I tried to end myself. We've been through the same horror. We are a disease, Jonathan. A sickness that corrupts all it touches. All we kiss, and all we kill. Look at me. Admire your ilk. I'm so sorry. Apologies will not suffice. I demand reparation. I want a miracle. Are you a miracle worker, Dr. Reed? No? <laughs> I'll show you mine then. The family Reed, reunited and complete, living forever in a red sea of eternal love. Time to go, Mother. Say hello to my son for Mary, me. Mary, wait. I have made friends with vital knowledge, vampires. We are not alone, Mary. With time, we can learn to live almost as we lived before. How long? What? How long will this masquerade continue? I've been watching you, all these knights in Whitechapel pretending you're still a doctor. You believe you're just fighting a disease, but it's you, the disease, Jonathan, you! I'm a scientist. I'll find a solution. Let our mother go, please. You're always the one to sway me to reason, Jonathan, but before your motivations were always pure. Now you're tainted. Let her go! She has no part to play in this. <sighs> Very well. Have you heard our good doctor? You can go home, mother. Go home and rest in peace. Yes. I'll go home and rest. <laughs> it's so easy to make them obey or forget puppets for our pleasure. I've seen you have your fun. You are mad. Oh, so that's what I am, Doctor. Mad. I was beginning to wonder. I I've been hearing these voices in my head, one in particular, that of my dead brother. 
This is the reason I must kill you. Not for your betrayal. Not for our poisonous kiss. Not even for the lies you tell yourself. No. It's so that smooth and wicked voice will stop ringing in my ear. <clears throat> Mary. No, don't! Time to die, brother. And this time for good. Jonathan. Blood priest. <laughs> Final thoughts are just to die for. Come 
to me, Jonathan. I'll make 
make you kneel like a dog, just as you did to Sean Hampton! <laughs> What have you done? Again, sweet brother. Oh, my God. 
Well, brother, it's time to bring this conversation to an end forever. You know I will not play this game. Calm now, Doctor. Like a rabid dog. Or think you're performing an autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. I'll kill them all. The kind Dr. Swansea. The sweet little lass with hair of red. I am the Harbinger, bringing your punishment. Mary. Don't you see? This is not me. Flesh that never ages. All nightmare, no dream. Bring it to a close. Let me sleep. I will find a cure, Mary. I swear it. Then, at last, I can forgive you.